The Virtual Ancient Egypt project at the Studio for Creative Inquiry is aiming at reconstructing now destroyed ancient environments, such as an ancient Egyptian temple, tomb, or house, uh, to allow um, students and scholars to work with materials now destroyed. In this, we can combine the content of the knowledge related to an ancient world culture uh, and allow the visualization of presently destroyed monuments. Reconstructing environments into which uh, objects that are s spread all around the world in different museums can be brought back together in a meaningful way to show what the original intentions of the people were and allow any interested person to not only see them in combination, but to actually experience how they worked and what they meant uh, to an ancient people, such as the ancient Egyptians. The virtual Egyptian temple being created with the help of Intel Corporation will allow us to look at a structure that was the, the heart and center of the Egyptian society, the center of every great city had a large temple that reflected the aspirations of the people living in that community, much in the way that uh, Gothic Cathedral did for French towns of the Middle Ages. Here we are looking at the facade of our virtual museum. From the lobby of the virtual museum, it is possible to enter into several virtual worlds. One of these is virtual ancient Egypt. Here we are looking at the a general view of a large Egyptian city temple. We can see that the front facade is two large structures called a pylon, representing the mountains to the east and west of the Nile River. It has an ornament, large and ornamental doorway and is decorated with religious scenes. In front of the doorway stand images of the god who lives within the temple. In this case, a hawk representing the god Horus, god of kingship in the sky. Welcome to the House of Horus. This splendid city temple in Upper Egypt was home and seat of power to the god Horus, whose name means the one high above. He was the hawk-headed god of kingship, the local creator god originally identified with the sky in the most ancient times. This great temple was built at the end of Egypt's long history by the Greco-Roman rulers of the Ptolemaic dynasty between 300 and 100 BC. Looking up at the face of the pylon here, we see a depiction of the important scene entitled Smiting of the Enemies of Egypt in which colossal figures of the king and the god of this temple ritually dispatch the nine bows, the tribes which lived around Egypt made up of Libyans, Africans, and Semitic Bedouin peoples. In this scene, the god Horus, here acting as the chief state god, presents the scimitar of victory and righteousness to the king, sanctifying and justifying his actions on behalf of all the gods. I'm project director of telecommunications and virtual reality here at the Studio for Creative Inquiry. And I have about 20 years of creative experience in telecommunications and various forms of contemporary art. For me, right now, virtual reality is the medium of my choice. 
when we design worlds here at the studio, virtual worlds, we're basically interested in three things. One is we want our worlds to look interesting, appealing, have a very high level of visual and technical detail. Two, we're interested in content and interactivity. How much content can we bring to the application and how interactive can we make it? Smart rooms, smart objects, different aspects of animation to convey salient features. And lastly, but perhaps most importantly, we're interested in multiple users co-inhabiting a world with a sense of tele-existence. And how we think of this is the beginning of, shall we say, the new art academies, the new art museums, the new network facilities of the future that from one locus or a network of loci uh, can distribute cultural events, historical phenomenon, and other such data through distributed virtual reality. Thank you.